Und dann machen wir jetzt fachlich weiter nach dem Now we'll start with or with continue with content. After cattle, we are now going to focus on horses, which is the second focal point of our conference. And I'd like to welcome Sabrina Ostfalk. Welcome at our conference. Sabrina Ostfalk keeps horses. She is also an active rider at, on her East Hawk Ranch. And she works both as a volunteer uh, in the VFD Association. VFD is the Association of Leisure Riders and Drivers in Germany, particularly in Bavaria. She is part of the chair there. And she will tell us something about horse husbandry in Bavaria, give us some facts and figures. And again, welcome, Sabrina Ostfalk. We're looking forward to hearing your presentation. Hello. Thank you for having me here. I'll take you on a journey about animal husbandry or horse husbandry in uh, Bavaria. My name is Sabrina ostfalk Gassner. I have a little farm close to Petzenstein, close to Peltensteiner Fonds in Upper Palatinate. And in 2021, February 2021, there were a few wolf killings, which was also highly covered by the media. And at my farm, I have between 10 and 12 horses, ponies, foals, um, 25-year-old horses, all types of horses, crossbred horses. And this presentation is held on behalf of the VFD Association to present the issue to you. So who is VFD? VFD is the Association of Leisure Riders and Drivers in Germany. It is a professional association for leisure, cross-country and trail riding and also driving. Throughout Germany, we have 50,000 members and in Bavaria, we have about 7,000. Let's look at animal husbandry. What does horse husbandry look like in Bavaria? According to the Animal Disease Fund, we have about 20,300 livestock keepers keeping around 140,000 horses in Bavaria, which is quite a significant number, 100 and 40,000 horses. In a national comparison, Bavaria is ranked second. I'm not sure if uh, maybe North Rhine-Westphalia was the highest, had the highest number of horses, but I'm not sure now. And about 12,000 of the horses that we keep, of the 140,000, 140, are kept um, at ecological farms, organic farms. So again, nationwide, Bavaria has most horses in organic husbandry nationwide. So we try to keep our horses well, practice organic husbandry, do what is possible, near to nature husbandry, for example. But we'll have a closer look at that later. I have here also one. Here's a graph for you to show you the numbers of horses uh, according to the Animal Disease Fund, a comparison of the past few years. And if you look at that, there are not many changes from, year, from one year to another. In 2021, we had a bit of a decrease, but the fluctuation is about 2,500 horses, more or less, per year. So the number is relatively constant and stable. What's interesting is that if we look at the 20,300 horse keepers in Bavaria, about 15,300 farms have more than one hectare per arable land that they use per horse. 
So we differentiate here either farms or horse keepers who have more space or more arable land for them or agricultural land or individual horse keepers or associations who don't have as much land and who uh, don't. And here is it so that ungefähr 78 percent uh, nee, 74 percent der Pferde who don't fall into this category and about 47 percent of the keepers Pferden. Ich habe versucht, das ein bisschen in einem Schema darzustellen, dass man es einfach erkennen kann. Der äußere Ring. Excuse me, there was a crack in the connection, so I couldn't translate. So the dark green area are farms with more than one hectare per horse and the smaller farms have less than one hectare of their arable land that they use for the horses and the inner ring are the horses in comparison. I thought that this was quite interesting as I worked this out that actually a lot happens in Bavaria through anim, uh, horse husbandry. Let's look at the graph in terms of agriculture. In Bavaria, we have 3.1 million hectare of agricultural area that are farmed. About 1.8 billion hectares are used for arable farming and about 0 0.87 million hectares are used for grassland. And alleine davon die bewirtschaftete Fläche and the agricultural land that is used by horse keepers is about 440,000 hectares, which does not mean that these areas are used exclusively for horses, but they are managed by horse keepers or horse owners. Out of these 440,000 hectares, at least, at least according to estimations, uh, at least 140,000 hectares are only used for the production of the feed and to give the animal space to move and exercise, which is actually quite a big proportion of agriculture, which is connected to horse husbandry or which is um, managed by horse keepers. Wir haben jetzt nicht nur den landwirtschaftlichen Bereich, so we looked at agriculture and horses. Let's look at economy and horses now. In Bayern machen alleine rund horses in Bavaria make up for about one billion of one billion euros of turnover in Bavaria. 1 billion euro only generated with horses. You, you could also say that about four horses secure one job. About 35,000 people live off horses. These can be uh, farmers, trainers, vets, accessory trade where you can buy accessories for horseback riding or also for fences. So in other words, it is a significant generator for jobs. In Bavaria, we have about 160 um, farms where people can be trained to become horse professionals and there are more ways to receive training and education in the sector of horses. Horses are not only used for horseback riding, but horseback riding is also a health sport and horses are used for therapeutic purposes or against diseases. This is something that we must not underestimate because it's also, or these fields are areas that we need to consider when we look at the economy of horses. In Bavaria, the horse is still a natural good, which is a lovely thing. And it is therefore nice to see the horses out in the paddocks. And this is why we'd, uh, I'd like to look at the different types of husbandry. 
Before, when we talked about cattle, we heard that um, keeping them on past pastures and letting them graze, but there, that this type of husbandry expands and something similar happens with the horses. We always try to keep them in a species appropriate way more and more. More new stables are built that provide more space for the horses, for example, where there are open stables, play pens and so on and so forth. If you have horses, you also need pastures for them. And this graph shows Germany and the proportion of individual husbandry in gray and group husbandry in green throughout Germany, where they are kept in an, in an open stable or on the pasture together in a herd. In Germany, we have about 70% of all horses that are kept individually and about 30% of all horses that are kept in groups. We Unfortunately, we don't have any exact numbers for Bavaria, but according to general estimations, where I also asked uh, different stakeholders in the fields, they told me that keeping animals in Bavaria um, means that about 55% of them are kept uh, individually and about 45% of the horses are kept in groups. In other words, in Bavaria, we try to keep the animals in herds to make sure that they have social contact amongst each other. Where animals have access to pasture, where they can go outside and have a good life. I'd like to show you a few pictures of different types of animal husbandry or give you examples what it encompasses. For example, we can keep them in boxes or paddock boxes, which would translate to individual husbandry. The benefit is that the animals are safe, they're kept individually. You can, in inverted commas, lock them away at night to make sure they are safely uh, kept. It's also important to make sure that they get enough movement or exercise so to have them outside in paddocks. And horses like to run and usually they move for 16 hours a day freely. And this is something that must be considered if you keep them in boxes. Uh, what's negative about po boxes is they cannot really play with each other, they cannot really nibble at each other and be social, and they don't have as much room to move. And individual boxes like this one that you can see here, once everything is locked, uh, air quality is another issue and other factors the, and the, that's a decision to make what do you want for your horses of course if he keeps boxes horses in boxes the horses are readily available and it's easier to feed them and to clear out um, their feces and so on and so forth Another example would be an open stable or playpen. This means that horses can move freely with their peers. Very often these stables are connected to existing farms or to villages or around the outskirts of villages. Of course, this requires more space and more work also in terms of the structure of areas because the areas within the stable should be divided into areas where they can lie areas where they feed and perhaps some animals also um, fight each other to um, establish hierarchies and uh, of course you have also more work you have you need more time to walk around and do the work in the stable and well horses drop where they stand the last example the almen are keeping horses on pastures and on mountain pastures. There are differences, of course, because if animals are kept in at mountain pastures, there, there are some things that differ. But in general, this type of horse husbandry means a lot of space for the animals, species appropriate husbandry. And it means and it means that they need safe and secure and permanent fencing. 
This is an issue today or in these days. How can we keep these animals safe? And what are problematic points? Because very often pastures or mountain pastures are away from the farm or away from the settlements. It's harder to exert control. And you would need regular checks to make sure if everything is okay or if the fences are still um, up and functioning or if something broke. What are challenges in terms of keeping horses? There is an increasing wish for species appropriate ecological horse husbandry to make sure that they are in line with nature. We also need to pay attention to the herd structure and herd composition. It involves a lot of time for care and stable work. Another issue is safety in the stable area. It requires regular checks and immediate repairs which again requires time. If we have the horses out on the pastures, we have more work. And one issue that has been named re repeatedly today was cutting, uh, cutting out the weeds and the grass. There is There are also dangers from intruding game or free roaming, roaming dogs or boars. We heard about the dogs, for example, or about um, guard dogs who can also be a danger to the animals. Another problem are nice people who think that they need to feed horses on a paddock or somewhere else and who don't know what to feed them. And it's quite tricky sometimes to stop them from doing that. Technology, expensive working machines are also a challenge either in big stables or in smaller individual stables or at smaller farms. Then stable design. We need to consider the size, the number of horses, the design. There are a lot of regulations to be observed, for example, about dung pits. Disposal disposal areas. Then permits, notifications, either building permits or certificate of competence or from the veterinary uh, authority, the animal disease fund. There are a lot of checks and controls. Another thing are insurances. They are not particularly cheap either. Sometimes it makes sense to get an to get extra insurance. And something that can help us as horse keepers are the guidelines for the assessment of horse for the guidelines for the assessment of horse keeping from an animal welfare point of view. But the thing is that we're all practitioners if we keep horses. So we also need to be able to apply all of this to practice. Ja, welche Aussichten für die Zukunft bringt das Ganze? Outlook on the future. What could happen in the future? Of course, it's difficult to say. One thing is that we are faced by rising costs. Everything becomes more expensive. Considering, for example, feeding costs or material costs of fences, which is insane, uh, an increase of 50% or even 100%, these investments uh, are har hardly pay off. We also have experienced or are experiencing poor harvests, droughts, or no dry times anymore, and a lot of rain. This is also something that we've observed, which makes the harvest increasingly difficult. And if you want to keep horses or build a fence around a paddock, you need a lot of permits. Um, and requirements, and it's harder and harder to fulfill them all. Another thing are customer de demands. If you offer your stable also for other horses, 
and then these your customers have a lot of wishes they want this and that and make sure that the animals are kept in a near to nature way at the same time they are unwilling to pay what you need to make everything profitable because we need to make sure that our animals are safe that they're clean that they're fed but at the same time all of this costs money and since we're also talking about the wolf here i wanted to include an outlook in terms of the wolf as well the costs are already high and through the situation with the wolf we have additional high costs if we want to if we want to include livestock protection measures. There's also a certain degree of insecurity with regard to panic in the herd or wolf attacks. I also live in wolf in a wolf territory. With my herd, I haven't really observed much, to be honest. I don't know what is going to happen in the future, but I th I'm thinking about it. I, but I also do know that the wolves were already on my paddock. I can't say at the moment where this will um, end up. Readers lose bulls, even though they have fences in place or they lose ponies, even if fences have a height of one meter twenty and five strands. Of course, this is something that just cannot be avoided. Wolves can come in. And in long term, horses can also become insecure through the contact with wolves or large carnivores or be shocked. And then they cannot be used as a school horse or training horse or therapy horse anymore if they were scared too much which is also or could be economic damage for the farm and i know that horse keepers do think about that Normally, we try to make sure that we can keep the horses in a, in a species-appropriate way. But what are our options? Since the wolf is here now, do we need to put them back in stables? What about animal husbandry on mountain pastures? Is this going to be too risky? In other words, it's important to have reasonable solutions. Guard dogs are another thing. They cannot be kept easily at every farm. All of these are things to be considered. On top of that, in Bavaria, there is not much support for, anim for horse husbandry from a, a public funding point of view. Horse keepers often feel left alone or partly left alone. For example, I tried to file an application for wolf protection fences. I get funding for one strand because here the horse is not considered prey of the wolf. That's what I heard. And then I thought, well, yeah, I am currently using four strands, the lowest at 40 centimeters, the highest at one meter 60. I would need more than one or two strands for appropriate fencing. I would also need poles and so on and so forth. There is no support. Another big issue is also that a lot of horse keepers haven't really considered the whole issue of the wolf. And this is one of the problems that I see, that people need to deal with this issue more. And then often, because people don't deal with it before, they panic as soon as the wolf is there because there's a lack of knowledge about it. And I've also noticed that um, regional public authorities often don't show or tell us when wolves are in their area or what to do when wolves are in the area. So I see a lack of information. This could be sent out um, or this, this information could be disseminated 
Dinge rangehen kann. In an official journal, for example, and sometimes I, I think they sometimes don't always do that because they want to avoid panic. Well, this was my excursion or my journey to show you horse husbandry in Bavaria. Thank you, Ms. Ostfall. Thank you very, very much for your insights and the outlook. In Bayern und den Herausforderungen, um, die Sie auch haben. Uh, thank you also um, for pointing out the challenges that you're facing. Dankeschön. Thank you. Danke auch für eure Aufmerksamkeit. And thank you for your attention. Ja, gerne. Um, It's a pleasure. Es wurde jetzt eine Frage gestellt. Um, One question know, was asked just there. I don't know. If you already have an answer, are there any practical findings on the compatibility of guard dogs in groups of horses? Well, what I've heard so far is that um, there are people who use guard dogs. I personally don't have any practical experience. I've only heard of it. I don't know if there's anyone here who could answer this question better than I. Also, vielleicht ist da jemand noch mit dabei. Maybe someone here can answer the question. Max, perhaps. Ja, dann springe ich mal ganz kurz rein. <lacht> um, ihr seht zwar wahrscheinlich wieder meinen Bildschirm, aber ich mache. I guess you see my entire screen, but I, I just wanted to look at, show you this picture. Using guard dogs with horses is not a challenge, either, neither for the horses nor for the keepers or the owners, it's even a little easier compared to keeping them with cows or cattle because horses don't consider the dogs a danger. We know this, that even during hunting, horses are just used to dogs much more. Often dogs are part of farms with horses and it's easier to have and Mr. Böhmer or Nöma said, uh, talked about the challenges. This is, for example, a new fence. On the top, you see a broad strand, which is mostly for the horse. And the question is how to design a fence with a broad strand and make sure that the horse, uh, that the dogs don't go through underneath and go for walks or say hello to a hiker. And the professional or there are professional methods um, on what to do you can learn how to build these fences for example with five or six strands or the quick and dirty method which means that you use a net fence from mobile fencing for sheep and put it around uh, install it on the outside and have a, a double type of fencing This type of network fence has the same effect. Uh, it keeps wolves away. I, I wouldn't say wolf secure, but it keeps it away. And if this is combined with dogs, then, for example, where you are, then you don't have any problems with that. These images are from Lower Saxony, where we know that there are several pucks packs and the horses are still intact. We could generally not say that horses are not prey of wolves. They can definitely be, but if the wolf finds other types of prey, not a horse that can pretty much defend itself well, then the wolf might Like, like if it's easier to find other pr prey like a rabbit or deer then they will but if we look at roe deer and horses then the sizes are more or less the same and the summary about horses uh, this was just a summary of what you can do with horses and fences Uh, Ms. Ostfalk, do you sometimes publish about wolves in your magazine? Yes, in the VFD magazine, we have had publications about wolves. Stephanie Morbach, I think, uh, 
wrote in our annual book last year with René Gombringer, or I had a conversation with René Gombringer after what happened at Petzenstein. We had organized an information event. Aber es war wirklich auch, wo damals bei uns eben die Risse waren. Ich wusste zwar, es sind Wölfe. And I remember, like back then, when we had the attacks, I knew they were wolves, but that was it. There was nobody saying, listen up, guys, perhaps you need a fence. I had to find out myself, retrieve the information, compile the information. It wasn't easy, and it, it was it was quite hard to get information from the public authorities. And I thought this was quite a, a shame because I felt left alone. And in Bavaria, the clocks run at a different speed compared to other states, for example. Yes, correct. You did, you did say quite rightly so that in terms of livestock protection, there is still a lot to do. 